Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Hope everyone's well and happy. And today we are going to uh, have a little bit of a break from the whimsical kind of things that we've been doing recently, which if you're watching this sometime in the future, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. But um, anyway, just today I'm going to uh, do a, a bunch of flowers because we haven't done flowers for ages, not traditional types of flowers anyway. So I'm going to show you today two ways of doing a very quick sketch, quite pretty, suitable for a birthday card or something like that. Up to you what colours you choose, but um, I'm going to choose a restricted palette of um, lilacs and greys, turquoise, lilac and grey today. And uh, I'm going to just show you the process that I go through when I'm starting something like this, because it's always a process. Um, it doesn't come out of, um, what's the word, a clear blue sky. Um, so this morning I woke up and um, I was checking messages and things like that, and Instagram sent me a, um, uh, what do you call them, a, a reel or a story or a short or a, I don't know what they call these, these things, it's so confusing. Anyway, I found myself watching somebody um, paint a bunch of flowers. So I thought, oh, I know, I'll paint a bunch of flowers. So um, I went to the studio to feed the dog and the cats. And while I was there, I thought, well, I'll just have a go at that. Um, so I scribbled in, I've got a notebook here that came from Ikea years ago. Oh yes, it did come from Ikea. Um, so I scribbled something down like that on this paper. This paper is not suitable for watercolour. Um, I did these birds here the other day using the Kurataki um, graphite colours and I was really quite pleased with the way they came out. So I went on from there to do the Exploring Kurataki graphite colours video that you will have seen probably. Um, that's a lot of fun and there's a lot that can be done with this and I'm planning on taking this a lot further. We'll do a video showing how I did these birds or other birds. Um, but anyway, so I did that, but this paper is only about 100 grams in weight, which is about as third as it, about a third of, of what it needs to be, ideally, for watercolour. Here's my uh, swatches that I was doing for planning out the other day when I first started to think about flowers. So we're going to be doing actually none of these particular combinations. I'm going to be doing violet and turquoise, something like this, and uh, grey. So anyway, so that was my first sketch. And you can see I've got a, a fairly uh, uh, what, squat kind of pot, vase, whatever, and three big flowers and a couple of medium sized ones. And um, that was my starting point. So then I went from there um, to another sketch and, um, and another sketch, which is this. But what I'm going to show you is, is how we came about that. And this is um, a sketch pad that I, I'm going to have a go at doing the whole painting in this thing. I found this sketch pad in a drawer yesterday when I was tidying up. It's a Dale Rowney cartridge paper sketch pad um, dating back some time. Um, when I went to flick through it to see if there were any empty pages, I found a few paintings, not paintings, this is a pencil sketch, a tonal sketch. I think I was practising um, I probably copied this from a book, um, or I might not have done because it says here Limpstone, September 2006, and I think I might have been on holiday, so I don't think, I think that might actually be an original piece of work by yours truly. This definitely is a copy, um, and I think I did that with Ray Balkwill down in Devon, and uh, these are studies from that same holiday. If you get the chance to go on a on a holiday, yeah, this is Shelley Gut. This is definitely that holiday that I went on down there with Ray Balkwill. 
in Devon. Um, if you get a chance to go on one of those things with the tutor, do seize the opportunity because it's very, very uh, helpful. And keep a sketchbook because you never know, do you? Um, what you might find later. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do this once in um, paint and once in pencil. So for the one in pencil, I'm going to use just four. Could probably get away with three. Um, don't really need both these violets. This is Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencils. Really old, but still work. Nice that they have the color on the actual pencil and not just a little bit at the end. So when you pick them out of the set, because there's a set of, I've got a set of 100 here. And um, when you pick them out, you can see what you're going for straight away. So I've got a cool gray, a turquoise, and two violets there. And I'm also going to use, these are getting worn out now, but this is my Faber-Castell Karat Aquarelle watercolor pencil in black, which I like to use for the initial sketching. I have got some more, but I want to get one of those things and I haven't got one yet. Um, you can get grip things that extend the length so that you can continue to use them even when they've got really, really small. This is getting to be beyond a joke, so I need a, an extender, I must get one. They're available on Amazon. Okay, and then the other thing I'm going to use is paint and uh, obviously a brush. The colors that I'll choose to match those colors would be this one, which is uh, Windsor Violet, something like that, Quinacridone Mauve, something like that. Um, turquoise, turquoise blue, could use that one, could use that one or that one. I've got the three here swatched out. Um, might use Davies Grey. This is Davies Grey, which would be the equivalent of this. And um, that's it, really. That's what we're going to use when we come to doing it in paint. Um, I've got a number eight round draw well maestro brush there, which I quite like. Um, or I might use, could use, no problem with the cheaper one, the draw well golden red one. That's a number seven. Um, I've got number three here too, which I might use. Um, and then what? Then what? Um, okay, so I have done, like I say, I did this one and I did this one. This one's in pencil, this one's in pencil and then paint. It's the same size, different paper. This one I did on the back of an envelope. This is an etcher envelope and it's practically card and they sent me these to try out. I don't think they meant me to paint on them, but you could, it's really thick. Um, this paper that I've used here is De La Rowney's Textura Rough Cartridge Paper. That's really quite nice too. I found that, that um, it's got a good little bit of a texture. I don't know if you can see that, which adds to the quality of the paper painting. Maybe I'll use this one for the watercolor version that I'm doing and, and this one for the pencil. So, um, put that to one side and uh, I shall find my chair and sit down and see what we can do. Oop. So the idea is to um, these things out of the way for a sec. Um, what did I say? Smooth one. So this would be the the, um, the pencil one. Okay. So you've got to, you've got a choice really. You can either uh, you could draw it with a pencil, a regular pencil. You could draw it with a black watercolor pencil like this. When you um, put water on it, this will run a little bit. Um, or you could draw it with the colors that you intend the picture to be. And that was what I had in mind here. So I'm going to start um, at the bottom. I think if you, if you have a vase of flowers, what do you do? You get the vase first, don't you? And then you put the flowers in it. So let's start with the vase and don't bother about any kind of uh, complicated shape or even anything symmetrical. You just, um, uh, you know, this is solid. We don't need to show the things going down into it. It's not glass. So, and then put some stems in, just any old how. And then you'll build your 
leaves onto that. So it's not the final answer. So anyway, you go right the way up to the top to where you're going to put the top things and then you can change colors if you want and decide where you're going to put your main feature flower. And I had mine right up the top here and then another one to the side. And I think probably I might put this one in first. So it had big leaves and just do them really loosely, big petals, not leaves, really, really loosely like that. And because you're doing this, this is just a, you could call this a scribble painting, really. It's not something that you're going to take hours and hours over. And it's something you could easily do in front of the television or waiting to see the doctor or whatever. That reminds me, my husband's got to go and see the surgeon today to have a, an all clear after his operation a month ago. I'm an invalid. God, honestly, I'll give you invalid. Um, so just scribble in a big mauve rose. Yeah, they dye flowers now, don't they? So you, you can get any color, but I suppose probably already always been able to get purple roses, haven't you? I don't know, I'm not a gardener. I like flowers, but I'm not an expert. When people start to talk about flowers, uh, gardens, and you've got euphorbia, oh, I've got ceanothus. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I learned that word the other day, euphorbia. We've got a little pot of euphorbia. It's kind of white, like, looks like fairy dust, amazing stuff. Um, grows like a weed. It's really good. Everything that we grow in our garden needs to grow like a weed, because if it doesn't, it doesn't grow. Okay, so I'm making up flowers here as I go along and I'm just putting them where I feel they balance the best. And I'm trying to avoid making the mistake I always make, which is to muck up the middle of my painting. Always here, around this part here, I make a mistake, always. Inevitable. So I'm trying not to do that. I probably will. Um, okay, so then we want some some nice leaves down here. Just do them with two strokes like that and over here some more. It looks like nothing on earth at the moment. And up here perhaps we'll have some I've changed the colour scheme a bit. I had mauve up here before, but I've got to put... Uh, um, and then you can fill them in a bit with a different colour, for example. And I'm going to put some lilac down here, put some mauve leaves here. And when you add water to this, with any luck, a flower here, a little bit of mauve on there. And I'm not going to do too much of this because we will do one, one layer, make it wet and then come in and do some darker darks. But these ones, these sprigs that come out at the side of the, of the painting make a lot of difference to the balance. Rather than concentrating on working in here all the time, Try to take the painting out, out. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my brush and wet some of this. This is on nice smooth paper, so you don't get much resistance. And don't just paint splosh splosh Try to make brush strokes, you know. You don't have to always rinse your brush out either. And you'll get some nice darker lines. Okay, 
Okay. So we've dampened quite a bit of it. And now we'll come back. Various different options here. I think I might bring in some nice, strong, maybe, maybe. This pencil is, is very interesting the way it does what it does. The birds are a lot quieter all of a sudden. We've just gone into August and it's amazing. You can still hear them a bit, but nowhere near as noisy as they are, are earlier on in the year. And are right up until the end of July. Tremendous amount of noise out there. And suddenly they go quiet. I don't know whether they're finished defending their territories or whatever. I don't know, but... Anyway, they seem to have quietened down quite a lot. Okay, so I've got some dark lines in there now. And, whoops, that doesn't seem to be working very well. The dark one is better. If by chance what happens to you is what's happened to me there, which is that that mauve is not living up to my expectations, then the thing to do is to take the line of least resistance and pick up some paint. And you could do it on here as well, you might want to. Now this paper is not um, behaving particularly well, which I think is interesting for you to see because, you know, we do talk an awful lot about the quality of paper, don't we, and why you should have certain kinds of paper. And this is sketch paper, and if you're experienced, you can probably make something work. If you're not, you might struggle. And I'm not quite sure if I'm going to struggle or not here. I think I probably am. Do we see how it goes? I was watching somebody else painting the other day. I think it was the Happy Painter. Um, that's a, um, a German website where they do a lot of whimsical type stuff. And amongst what this lady was saying, she said, if you don't like your painting, keep going. Don't stop. Keep going until you do. <laughs> so I, I think that's actually really good advice because it's very easy to get, um, uh, what's the word, um, to be disappointed at the beginning, or you go to a certain, ex a certain stage and then you think, oh God. But just keep going, because what have you got to lose?
I don't, I don't, as you know, I don't believe in planning out things too much in advance. I like to uh, have an idea, look what other people have done, see what's out there, and then start and see what happens. Hello, Lottie. Okay, so you can see how just adding a few uh, pencil lines, because of the way this went, we had to adjust what we were doing. And it's not quite the same as my original, obviously, because this was just a sketch anyway. So you've hopefully, by the time you've done this, you've hopefully learned something. And we can come back in and darken up some of the lines that we've put in by just going over it with water because this wonderful pencil is fairly miraculous. It's fun, good fun. Gives you a lot more depth to your painting just by literally wetting that pencil. Now we need to let it dry and see whether we need to do anything else or whether that will do as a little sketch. A little sketch in cool blue and violet. Okay, so now we'll have a go at the second one, which is going to be done in a slightly different way, using watercolour pencil to do the sketch with and then watercolour paint to, uh, to paint the flowers with. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to, this is my original and I've got it sitting there so that you can see where I'm headed. And I will try to more or less reproduce what I did. And again, like I said before, um, you can start with the vase um, and basically build up from the vase. So that's an idea it's a way of doing it. You don't have to do it that way, of course, if you don't want to, but um, sometimes I think that it helps. So we just put, just sketching leaves in roughly and sort of indicating they don't have to be necessarily all joined on. And then we'll take a stem up here a little bit, stem up here, then maybe we'll indicate one coming down there, and one coming out there, perhaps. Um, and then in just give a hint. Um, and if you feel that you've got it too big, which I do, then you can rub it out at this point. Probably. <laughs> That's the only problem with watercolour pencils is that they tend not to be easy to erase. That's fine. Okay, so then up here, I'm going to put my large rose. So I'll just sketch of the location of that, and then my big petaled flower here with its centre. And then underneath here, we've got 
some sort of sketchy daisies and then something, a flower made up of sort of separate things and then another daisy here and then a branch coming out here with some of those, you know, something like that. Another one up here, perhaps with something like that. At the top, we'll have something like something with roundish leaves, a bit like eucalyptus or whatever that might be. And then another one like that over here. Not on exactly the same level, bring it down a bit. And then maybe another daisy here. And then we can fill in with some leaves. Make them a bit smaller as they get towards the, the end. And we might have a sort of something like that there, I don't know. Okay, so, so something along those lines. And then we'll um, go for some paint. Let's um, start. I'm just going. I'm not going to use very many colours. I'm going to try uh, painting this in with this violet. I don't. I'm not sure what colour that is. I think it's. Acridone violet or Windsor violet, something like that. And then the um, this one over here we're going to do in this nice turquoisey blue colour. And then we'll have some more of that here. It out there, and we're going to. We really, you know, we want to keep this really simple and easy and light. So we're just going to drop in our purple flowers, mar marguerites, or I don't know what they would be. dark centres in <clears throat> and let them bleed a little bit. Then perhaps mix a little bit of the blue with some of the violet to make a darker colour. So, sorry, a darker blue. So you can add something to these a little bit. Then I'm going to use um, Davies Grey with a little touch of turquoise and uh, paint some of these leaves. It's very <clears throat> important, actually, that you have a brush that you're comfortable with. I think 
You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you need a, a brush, I, I find anyway, that um, that you know what it's going to do. And then if you know what it's going to do, it doesn't matter what, what it does. I mean, you, you can, I don't know, I um, don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, yeah, okay, it's one of those days. <laughs> One of those days, I'm going to put some. I'm going to soften that mauve because there's nothing worse than a too, too pink. I thought it would be a good idea to just show you how <clears throat> hard, honestly, it is to paint on um, cheap paper. Like I said, if you know what you're doing, you might be able to make it work. But if you don't, you might not. Um, it might work. Might not. I suppose it all depends what you mean by working, doesn't it? Okay, I think that needs to dry. And then we'll see what we've done. So here we are, just to show you that uh, there's no shame in doing a painting more than once. Um, different versions of exactly the same idea using different techniques and um, with varying levels of success and failure. And uh, ending up here with the final version, which I think is acceptable. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, give me a like and subscribe if you did and um, have a go, see what you think. See what you think of this technique, painting with watercolor pencils <clears throat> and watercolor paint on really cheap paper. And also this is old as well. This is probably 20 years old, 150 pound paper, not 300 pound like most of what we use. No taping down, nothing special at all, but um, you know, you could cut that out and stick it in your junk journal, couldn't you? So I'll say goodbye for now, everybody, and I will see you again soon. So bye for now. Bye-bye.